actually, when you see a title like this, Creating Strong Woman, usually what happens is that um, everyone starts using their phone because they, they think that, okay, this is a um, man-hating feminist and no one's really interested. So either it's that or, it's, or people think that, oh, women are, the, women are weak. There's no in-between. And this is, but I'm here to speak about my journey and perception of women. So uh, my journey starts from uh, back in 2011. I was a student of criminology, and I wanted to, so I came here for one summer, and I wanted to do an internship. So I joined a legal firm, and I, to be honest, I did not look for value in this, uh, in, in the legal firm that I, was, uh, that I applied to. I just really wanted a fancy CV. I'm sure you all want a fancy CV at one point. So, uh, so I joined, and they told me that, okay, you're not a lawyer, but you're a criminologist, so what you will do is you can actually, um, you can do research on women, rape, and the criminal justice system in Bangladesh. So I thought this was interesting. But what I didn't know was that this was actually going to change my life. So what they really wanted me to research on was uh, women and how medical evidence is significant when assessing rape cases in court. So I thought, um, so I thought okay, uh, this will be interesting. So one of the most notable moments from then was that um, I had to go to high court and interview judges. So I asked the judge, I asked for, I asked, what kind of information do you need when you're assessing rape cases? And he actually gave me a sheet with information of a woman who was just raped. And there were a lot of, there was, there were, her name was written down, a lot of things were written down. But one thing that really caught my eye was that her body measurements were written down. And I said, how is this significant? I honestly thought that there was something, there was some scientific theory to this. So I said, why are her body measurements written down on this uh, sheet of paper? And the judge looked at me like I was stupid. He said, well, don't you know? And this is actually what he said. He said that her body measurements are an indicator for how attractive she is and her lawyers need to know if she's attractive enough to be raped. So, let that sink in. So from then onwards, uh, firstly I cried, and mind you, I was only 19 then, I cried and I, did not, I could not believe that this is how women were perceived. And I knew that I had to change something about this. So uh, fast forward a few years later, um, I, worked, I started working as a researcher. I read a lot of books. I, did, um, I, inter I conducted some interviews with women who were raped, women who didn't want to speak. And so I read about, I read about a lot of things. I read about um, the animal kingdom, even. And, someone, and then I heard that there was something about survival of the fittest. And they said that animals hunt because they want to be on top of the food chain. Similarly, it was also compared that men rape women not because of sexual desire, not because they're attractive, because they want to exercise power and they want to be more powerful. And I thought, okay, so women are looked at as the weaker sex. And then I started conducting interviews and there were two notable interviews. I asked one, woman, I was talking to her about it, and she said that every time she went up to her husband and she said, we both need to earn money, he, he would actually rape her. He would just get angry and he would rape her every night. And she was the one who actually found out that there was a pattern. Then um, another one was, there was a young girl and she said that she was very naughty. She used to... Um, do a lot of, she used to pick fights with everyone in her school. But who she didn't like fighting with was her brother, because every time she tried to pick fights with her brother, her brother every night would rape her. And she did not know that it was rape. 
But after a few years, she found out that she was continuously raped. So this really shows that women are perceived to be the weaker sex. And then I decided to actually change something. I decided to design a program. And I really wanted to show women to be more strong. And um, so what I did was I decided to uh, design a project. It's called the Self-Defense Project. And I just wanted to show self-defense because it's more symbolic. And I wanted to show women that, um, I wanted to teach women how to fight, just to, just to increase their visibility, to increase their confidence. And I started, I started, I started with, in the slums of Dhaka. And when the women, a lot of young girls came together, and I started working with 20 young girls. And that project was a fail. So um, what actually happened was that, impact-wise, it was a fail, because I started working with 20 girls. Eventually, some people came in and said, this is not what girls do. This is, you should just stay at home. So out of the 20 girls, only six stayed alone. And they completed the, whole, the entire program of learning self-defense. So what happened was, um, I thought, OK, so this is clearly not working out. But what actually changed was the call that I got two weeks later. So two weeks later, one of the six girls who graduated from my program called me and asked me, why are you not continuing this program? And I said, well, because I brought 20 girls, but only six stayed on, so I thought nobody was interested. And to which she said, what are you talking about? I changed my entire community. And I said, what are you talking about? And she said, well, there was a tailor in my community who takes measurements of um, girls who want to make their uniforms. And what he used to do was he used to grope these young girls, sexually touch them. And everyone knew what was going on, but the authorities did not want to do anything about it because they thought groping was not, a, it was not sensitive enough. So I went up to the tailor and I confronted him. And I did not exercise violence, but I went and I asked, why are you doing this? The tailor was actually scared enough and kept a female assistant. Then a few days later, another girl called and she said, I stood up to my stalker. I, he, kept, he thought that if, I, if he kept stalking me, he would, uh, he would finally get a chance with me. But I went and I told him that you need to stop. So it was just the confidence booster. It's not that these girls, when they were physically trained, um, that they wanted to exercise violence. They, just, they were just more visible. And finally, the men in their lives realized that they, um, that they are finally equivalent to them. So I just want to conclude and ask everyone that I know there are a lot of, we create a lot of opportunities, there are economic opportunities, there are a lot of awareness programs, but how many of us really tell women that they're strong enough to obtain these opportunities? Just creating opportunities is not enough. We really need to create strong women before we create these opportunities. Thank you.